Okay, great. Sense. So you should be comfortable with Ohm's law by now. Now, a very important thing to note is that when you have, um, it doesn't matter what the scenario is, it doesn't matter what your circuit looks like, but Ohm's law always applies. Okay, so always remember that Ohm's law can apply. Okay, now it um, can apply across individual components. Okay, so if you're looking at just a single resistor or a single light bulb, then Ohm's law can apply. So you'll do the potential difference across that component is equal to the current through that component multiplied by the resistance of that component. Or you can actually do it for the whole circuit. Okay, so this, if you think back to the example from Ohm's law that we did yesterday, if you're looking at the entire circuit, then you'll look at the terminal potential difference. So that's the total potential difference supplied by the battery is equal to the current going through the battery multiplied by the total resistance in the circuit. Okay. Now the things that, um, that, that will be affected by what kind of circuit you have is this V total, the I total, and the R total. Okay. So if you know your V, your I, and your R, or two of the three, beautiful, you can use Ohm's law, but if you can't use Ohm's law, then you need to understand how potential difference, current, and resistance work in a series circuit, or what we're gonna look at tomorrow in a parallel circuit. Okay, so firstly, series circuit, what is it? Hoping you remember this from grade eight and nine, a series circuit is a circuit in which the current does not split. So there are no branches. There is a single pathway for your current to take. So our current leaves our battery, okay? And it goes around our circuits without ever splitting. Okay, the, poten the voltmeters, these voltmeters that measure potential difference, these are connected in parallel, but they have such a high resistance that hardly any current goes up there. So we don't include our voltmeters as um, resistors in parallel. Okay, so our resistors are all in, se <clears throat> in series. Now, um, how does that affect the current? Well, that comes from the definition of a series circuit. A series circuit is a circuit in which there is only one pathway for the current to follow. So that means that the current going through your battery is the same as the current going through your resistor, same as that resistor, same as that resistor. So whatever the reading on this ammeter is, that value for that current will be the same everywhere in the circuit. Okay, so because current follows a single pathway in a series circuit, it means current is the same everywhere. Okay, so current, you've got this written down and explained in your notes already, so I'm just going to look at the maths of it. So in your notes it says there, there is only one pathway for the current to follow, so the current is the same at every point in the circuit. Okay, so that means that the current going through your battery, in other words, the total current in the circuit, will be equal to the current going through resistor 1, which is going to be the same as the current going through resistor 2, which will be the same as the current going through resistor 3. Okay, which, and this is not on your notes, but that will be the same as the reading on the ammeter. Okay, so your current is the same everywhere in a series circuit. Now, next up is potential difference. Okay, this one's a little bit um, trickier. So potential difference, the best way to remember it. So remember potential difference is basically the energy supplied per unit charge, right? So the battery gives each individual electron a certain amount of energy, okay? And the energy that they have when they leave the battery compared to the energy that they get when they get, that they have when they get back to the battery. That is the potential difference of the whole circuit or the terminal potential difference or the total potential difference okay so that potential difference is basically it's the amount of energy needed to get from the battery all the way around the circuit back to the battery okay and that energy is split between the different components that it has to go through okay so let's say i give let's say to get through each of these resistors we need two volts okay two volts of potential difference two joules of energy per um, unit charge per electron. So if I need two to get through there, 
two to get through there and two to get through there. It means I'll need a total of six volts to get through this whole circuit. So my battery has to supply six volts. Okay, so basically with a series circuit, your potential difference is divided amongst your resistors. So whatever your total potential difference is, that will be divided amongst your resistors. But be careful, it's not necessarily going to be divided equally. It will be divided according to the resistance. So if these all had the same resistance, then they would need the same amount of energy, right? Each electron would have to work just as hard to get through each of the resistors if they had the same resistance. So in that case, yes, the potential difference would be the same for each resistor. But let's say this resistor had a much higher resistance, then the electrons would need more energy to get through that one than they would need to get through this one. Okay, so it's split not necessarily evenly, it splits according to the resistance. So with potential difference, it's divided among the resistors in series, and it's divided in such a way that the higher the resistance is, the more potential difference will be. Okay, so I'm actually going to, this is not in your notes, but the potential difference over a component is proportional to the resistance of that component. Okay, now, um, Okay, now on to actually the maths. So the total or the terminal potential difference, the reading on this voltmeter, the total energy being supplied by the battery will be equal to the potential difference across that resistor plus the potential difference across that one plus the potential difference across that one, right? Because the energy supplied by the battery needs to get the electrons through all three of these resistors. So the total potential difference is equal to V1 plus V2 plus V3, etc. There might be more resistors. Okay, carry on and on and on. Okay, and then the third and last thing we need to talk about is resistance, how resistance is affected. Okay, nice and straightforward. Um, the total or the equivalent, you might hear it said equivalent resistance. So the total resistance or the equivalent resistance of a series circuit, nice and easy, is just equal to the sum of all of your resistors. Okay, so if I wanted to know what the total resistance in the circuit was, I would just add together the first, the second, and the third resistors. Okay, and that's it. That's how current potential difference and resistance work in a series circuit. It's different for parallel, so just hang on for that. I'm hoping you remember it's a lot of things get a bit strange when you have parallel resistors. But for now, that is how it works with a series circuit. Okay, so I'm going to pause you, erase this, and then we're going to do a few examples. Okay, guys, so here is our example. So we've got a little diagram of a circuit. Let's quickly look at it. So we've got a battery. They tell us they've got a voltmeter connected across the battery. So they've given us the terminal potential difference is 16 volts. Remember, that means that's the total energy supplied for the whole circuit. Hey? So the whole circuit requires 16 volts. Then we've got a 2 ohm resistor. They've told us that 3 of those 16 volts need to be used up for the 2 ohm resistor. And then we have a second resistor labeled R1 with a voltmeter attached as well, labeled V1. Okay, now the questions. Question A, what is the current going through the 2 ohm resistor? Now, whenever you have a circuit, you've got two options for answering a question. You either use Ohm's law, or if you can't use Ohm's law, you use your knowledge of circuits to answer it. Okay, now, in order to use Ohm's law, you need to know two of the three variables at that component. Okay, so let's look. At the 2 ohm resistor, at this component, we know the resistance and we know the potential difference. And we are looking for the current. Okay. So because we know two of the three variables, it means we can use Ohm's law. But you have to know the two of the three variables at that component. So at this resistor, we do know the resistance and the potential difference, and we're looking for the current. So we can go and use Ohm's law. You always write it down because the formula is worth a mark. You show your substitution, so 3 volts unknown current and 2 ohms and then we divide 3 by 2 and we get the current is one and a half. Okay, 1.5 amps worth of currents going through our 2 ohm resistor. Okay, question B, determine the potential difference 
over, that says over, I'm also looking at it thinking what is that, that says over, determine the potential difference over R1. Okay, so let's check can we use Ohm's law. Well, I know that the current here is the same as the current here, it's 1.5 amps here, right? And these are in series, so all 1.5 amps must be traveling through this resistor as well. So for this resistor, I know my current, I do not know my resistance, and I do not know my potential difference. So that means I cannot use Ohm's law for this resistor, which means instead of using Ohm's law, I have to use my understanding of how things work in a series circuit. So let's look again. They're asking for potential difference. How does potential difference work in a series circuit? The total potential difference is equal to the sum of the potential difference of each component. Now we know the total potential difference. We know the potential difference across this resistor and that's the only other component. So I can actually use this as an equation. I can say that V total is equal to the potential difference across my 2 ohm resistor. Now, I, when it comes to this, it's up to you how you want to manage your subscripts. I'm not sure if I've spoken to you about subscripts. Um, this, this little baby T, that's a subscript. V T, it's a label for that. So it's potential difference total. Okay, so when I talk about potential difference of this resistor, I'm going to call it the potential difference. <laughs> The potential difference of the 2 ohm resistor. Okay, so I'm putting a little subscript so I know in my mind what I'm actually doing. Okay, it's up to you how you manage your subscripts. If you want to actually just call this resistor A and this resistor B and then say it's VA plus VB, you can do that. Okay, I like to just sort of stick to the information given. So the potential difference of the 2 ohm resistor plus the potential difference um, read by this voltmeter, which is going to be V1. Okay, and now we can substitute in and solve. So my total terminal potential difference is 16 volts, and that's equal to the potential difference through this resistor, which is 3, plus the unknown potential difference, and now we solve for V1. So V1 will equal 13 volts. Okay, then next up, question C. What is the resistance of R1. Okay, so again, let's check if we can use Ohm's law there. Okay, I know the current there, okay? The current here is 1.5 amps, same as the current there because this is a series circuit. I know the potential difference is 13 volts, I've just worked that out, and I am looking for the resistance. So I do have two of the three components yeah, sorry, two of the three variables at this component, so I can use Ohm's law. I can use V equals IR, and we substitute. V is, we've just worked it out, 13. Current is 1,5, because it's a series circuit and it's the same everywhere, and the resistance is what we're looking for. Okay, I just want to add that as a note here. The reason the current is 1.5 is because the current through R1 is equal to the current everywhere because it's a series circuit. Okay, that is how we knew that the current was 1.5. And now we solve for R by dividing 13 by 1.5. And, and we get the resistance of R1 is equal to uh, 8,6. 7 ohms. Okay, and then the last question, question D, what is the total resistance? So whenever they talk about total, you are welcome to use Ohm's law for the whole circuit. So let's see, do we know the total values? We know the potential difference, the total potential difference. We know that the current through the battery is 1.5 because the current through the battery is the same as the current everywhere and we are looking for our total. So we can use Ohm's law there. Okay, so we're going to do it using Ohm's law. So V total equals I total times R total. The total potential difference is 16 volts. The current is the same everywhere, 1.5. And the total resistance is what we're looking for. So for the total resistance, we would divide both sides by this 1.5.
and we find that the total resistance is going to be 10,67. Okay, so that's one way of doing it. But now let's say you forgot that Ohm's law exists, or maybe you just don't like Ohm's law. Okay, and there is another way of doing it, just for this specific example, it's not always going to be the case that you can do a question like this both ways. But for this specific case, let's say we couldn't use Ohm's law, let's rather try the other one. The, remember the, our understanding of how series circuits works. So resistance in a series circuit, the total resistance is just equal to the sum of all the resistances. And we know the resistance of both of our resistors. So the total resistance is the, that resistance, 2, plus the resistance of R1, which we worked out over here, 8,67. And when we add those together, we get 10,67 ohms. Okay, so for this one, you actually have two options. You could use Ohm's law. And if you didn't like Ohm's law, or if you felt you weren't comfortable using it, you can also use your understanding or your knowledge of series circuits or of resistance in series circuits. Okay, so note for every question, there's two options of how to solve it, and you need to figure out which is the option to use. Either use Ohm's law if you know two of the three variables at that component. If you don't, if you can't use Ohm's law, then you look, oh, how does this specific variable work in series circuits. Do I add more together? Is it the same everywhere? How does it work? Okay, that's basically it. So I um, have got a, yeah, there's a worksheet attached there to the note for you. You guys are going to try that worksheet. I will send you through the memo in about two days time. Um, yeah, we've got to, we've got a lot to do for for circuits. So you guys need to make sure you're keeping up to date, make sure that you are understanding everything. If you aren't, you need to speak to me and we will be doing those um, consolidation slash Q&A classes. At the time of recording this though, I haven't had any feedback about when you guys want to do that. So as soon as I have feedback, it will probably be before I actually post this video, then um, yeah, we'll be having those videos. Anyway, let me know if you need help, please. Let me know if you get stuck. Hopefully you guys are, are okay with this. It, it is, I'm pretty sure you learned it in grade eight and nine. So it should be revision. If not, it should be at least based on something that you have seen before.